So welcome back everybody. We're back again with Mitch and we're gonna check out some different masonry tools. Today we're gonna to be looking at uh, slickers and joiners and what the function of them are, different materials, aluminum versus steel and how they're used and what's kind of a good basic setup if you're just getting into masonry. So Mitch, what kind of different uh, slickers do we have here? So we've got two different slickers and uh, one is steel and one is aluminum. And it's when it comes to these slickers and your strikers, it's mostly about your preference of, of what material you like. Um, steel is a little bit different when you're slicking joints than what your aluminum is going to do. Your steel kind of slides over the joint, makes it real smooth, and whereas your aluminum, when you're sliding that across the joint, it kind of pulls some of the mortar with the, with the slicker, but that also helps you to kind of fill in some holes and stuff like that. So would the aluminum or the steel give a different finish one over the other? Does the aluminum give a little bit rougher finish or what, what, what's the end result of one versus the other? The, the steel would definitely give you a smoother, um, sleeker looking finish than the aluminum would. And, and then it depends whether you have that brush finish or whether you're going for that kind of tooled mark look in your joint. Okay. So like the stone behind us that you just repointed this week, uh, what did you use on, on that? I used the steel slicker and, um, and what I ended up doing was scratching it with the steel then too and then giving it a brush finish. Okay, so really the brush is the, the mark that's left or the finish that really is the final product that you see. Correct. Gotcha. So what other shapes do we have here? What are these other tools that have, uh, looks like a slicker but it's got a kind of a curve to it? So this is what we call a concave joiner, um, a striker, more commonly known as. Just to clarify, a striker, also called a jointer, that's jointer with a T, is used primarily in brick and block work, where the mason needs to strike in the joint. That's how I remember the name. Two different names for the same tool. On the other hand, in stonework, the mason uses a slicker to press in, to slick in the mortar into the joints and shape that mortar to the lines that he chooses. And uh, these come in, again, steel, and then there's also aluminum. And kind of the same idea, your steel is gonna slide over that joint real nice, make it a, a real nice smooth finish. And then your aluminum one, as you pull it along, it's going to drag some of that mortar and fill in those, those little bumps or little holes here and there too. Um, as well as different materials, there's also different sizes. You can get a good look here. Um, one of these is a uh, half inch, and then the other end is a three eighths. And then this one, I believe, is three quarters by one inch. And it's good to have some different sizes in your bag. Um, you never know what you're gonna run into as far as uh, joint sizes, especially in some repair jobs. Of these uh, couple that we have here, what's your most commonly used? Or if you, were, if you were just starting out, which ones would be the first ones that you would purchase that you know, be most, uh, most widely used? Most widely used is going to be um, just probably your half inch, three eighths inch uh, striker um, in your block and your brickwork. Um, that's going to be your most common. Now, if you're stonework, you don't need that concave. You need to get a slicker like this one. So, Mitch, I see we have one more tool here that looks kind of like a combination between a slicker and a joiner. What's this for? So this is what we call a grapevine joiner or grapevine striker. And what it is, is it has a little little ridge here in the center of it. So we can get a better shot of that. Kind of have that, oh, come on, focus. There we go, we got kind of a ridge right in the center. It kind of looks like a T there. And they're the same on both sides, just different size, sizes. Yeah, so it's the same thing. On this side, you have about a half inch. And on this side, it's about a three eighths inch. And that's three eighths is how wide it is and then you have that little line going down through the center. So when you drag it across that joint, it creates a little bit of an indent. So this grapevine slicker really just provides a little bit fancier of a finish. Just, just one more level of detail. Pretty neat. So there's one last tool here that is a little less common, well really a lot less common, but it's sometimes used in a little bit fancier stonework, and that's called a box joiner. So tell us a little bit about the box joiner, Mitch. What's it made out of, first of all? Is that aluminum or steel? So this one's made out of aluminum. And um, this is a very unique one. You can see. Kind of see that profile there. It's got a little bit of a square box to it. 
And what you'll end up doing with this one is in stonework. Yeah, like how would you use it in on these joints? So what you would do, you would you would bag this in nice and flat as it is, and then go over top of this joint with another bead of uh, of mortar, and then once that hardens up a little bit, just enough to use this thing, then you take that right over top of your existing joint, and then you you would. When it comes to intersections, that's when it gets really tricky to use these because you want a really nice, crisp uh, T on your intersections. Uh, no, none of these lines running over each other. Um, so these are a little bit trickier to use. So really when you come to an intersection, it's all about experience and just being able to work with it. There's no tool that really does that for you, right? Correct. Gotcha. So. Well, that's been a, a brief overview of some different joiners and slickers and how they're used and kind of what the most common ones are. Thanks again, Mitch, for uh, being with us today and uh, showing us how it's done. We'll see you next time.